Money Heist Part 5, Volume 1 was awesome, tragic, but fantastic. This video has five parts, most of which center around the motifs of resurrection and rebirth. Let's start with the subplot that has an implied happy ending, Berlin's son, Raphael. Berlin reconnected with his son, Raphael, and together, they pulled off a heist in which they stole the Viking gold from Castle Friedrich. But that was not the only heist of that subplot. Berlin's new wife, Tatiana, was kissed by fire. She was a total hottie. And Berlin's son Raphael thought the same. He immediately had a crush on her. Fast forward, and as they drove away from the heist, Berlin said, If you really want something in life, you have to steal it from somebody else. Then, Raphael looked back to Tatiana, suggesting that Raphael may have gone on to steal Tatiana from Berlin. From straight and narrow computer nerd, to stealing gold, to stealing his father's wife. Raphael had two rebirths. And so did Stockholm. Stockholm was reborn from a naive girl to a badass mother. But she began to struggle with those changes. She worried that she is failing her child, Cincinnati. And she began to wonder if she has strayed down the wrong path. Arturo shot Denver and ran off with some of the hostages. But they were unable to escape since the team had put explosives on the loading dock's doors. The heist team tracked them down. And Arturo put up a surprisingly good fight. But Stockholm's fight was even better. As Arturo's gang shot from behind a forklift, Stockholm climbed through the vents and dropped down on Arturo. When he reached for his gun, she shot him, and he died. But luckily for him, Stockholm has a huge heart. She gave him CPR, and they resurrected him, after which Stockholm spent the rest of the season having hallucinations of Arturo. She even drugged herself in an attempt to escape the pain. Another character who underwent a rebirth this season was Sierra. Money Heist Part 4 ended with Sierra independently tracking down the professor. Her goal was to get him to tell her everything so that she could resurrect her career. And she was making progress. But Colonel Tamio fabricated evidence against her and threw her under the bus to the press. Then, her water broke. So Sierra freed Benjamin, who freed the professor, and the professor helped her give birth. So now she is conflicted. Lisbon had reached out to Sierra in Money Heist Part 4 when Sierra spoke sadly about her late husband. And in Part 5, the professor helped her give birth. Then, Lisbon congratulated her. Congratulations. So Money Heist Part 5 ended with Sierra in the bathroom, struggling as to which path to take going forward. Now, let's discuss the main plot, the museum. Colonel Tamio sent in Sagasta through the roof of the museum, and Helsinki was thrown back from the blast and trapped under a pillar. Tamayo had planned on sending in a second force, but Lisbon stopped that with the key move. As a reminder, Lisbon put microphones inside the handcuffs of the hostages, so they recorded some of the very corrupt stuff that Tamayo had said. The professor then called Tamayo on an unrecorded line and used it as leverage. The professor told Tamayo to not send in a second force, and to save his own butt, Tamayo complied. So the heist team had to deal with just one group, Sagas's team. On the other hand, the heist team attacked from two sides. Palermo, Rio, and Bogota went to help Helsinki from one side. They pulled him back to safety and Stockholm tended to his wounds. Meanwhile, Tokyo, Denver, and Manila entered the museum from the hole in the roof. And the plan worked. They trapped Sagas' team, at least for a little bit. But eventually, Sagas' team threw grenades and they escaped behind a safe door. That move sealed themselves inside a section with just Denver, Manila, and Tokyo. Tokyo, Denver, and Manila barricaded themselves inside the kitchen and were nearly blown up by Gandia, but thankfully, Tokyo pulled off this maneuver here, pretty sick. Meanwhile, Palermo and Bogota worked on getting through the safe door, and Rio went off on his own and started digging up into the kitchen floor. Unfortunately, they were all too late. Snipers hit Tokyo five times. Denver and Manila climbed down the chute, but it was six stories high, so Tokyo stayed behind. Her friends were so close to saving her, especially Rio, who was able to see and touch her one last time. When Gandia turned her over, Tokyo revealed her last gift. Then boom. Tokyo went out like a boss, just like Berlin did back in the day. So how did it come to this? First off, Tokyo and her former lover, Renee, wanted to be free. If we don't steal, our lives are stolen from us. Renee warned Tokyo that it would be much riskier to rob banks. But after 15 successful heists, they decided to go for it, to try to rob a bank. Unfortunately, Rene was killed during the bank heist. Tokyo escaped and went on the run. She ran not just from the police, 
but from pain and guilt. But eventually there comes a moment when you stop and all that pain washes over you. Meanwhile, Berlin saw Tokyo on the news and fell in love with the way in which Tokyo had escaped. She was hanging from the ceiling like Spider-Man. Who does that? Berlin loved how she got past the blockade inside a patrol car with the sirens on, like a queen. Is it or is it not art? Long story short, Berlin convinced his brother Sergio to recruit Tokyo. The professor hoped that Tokyo was strong enough to be born again, to be happy again, and she was. She was strong enough to start a new life. Tokyo said that a lot of people believe that we only find one true love in our lives. But what they don't realize is you could have several lives. After being recruited by Berlin and the professor, Tokyo was reborn. And while training for the first heist, she fell in love with Ryo. They escaped together and were happy. But then she got bored, so she left him. Ryo missed her, so he called her on the satellite phone. And that was the beginning of the end for Tokyo, because the police caught Ryo. And that's how this entire second heist began in the first place. It began as a way to free Rio, And they did that, but unfortunately, it came at the cost of the lives of Nairobi and now Tokyo. But it begs the question, what's next for Nairobi and Tokyo? They had different opinions about death. Nairobi didn't believe in an afterlife, but she believed that you do leave behind a memory. And she's right. Tokyo will live on inside Rio, as well as the others. But what about Tokyo's interpretation of death? Tokyo believes that you keep on living in the final thought you have the moment before you die. And she told Rio that she was thinking of their first night in Toledo when they danced together. So I'll stay and live in those memories forever. Well, I think that's a beautiful plan. 